Hey, uh, this is Zach Smith again with one-on-one uh, -on -one with Zach Smith Photography. I'm here, wait, no, I'm here. Uh, see, it's backwards with uh, Kathy Anderson. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Zach. Thanks for uh, taking the time out of your day to join me in this, uh, not really an interview. It's just like we're hanging out and there's lights and cameras on us. Correct. Sounds okay? Sounds great. Awesome. Uh, so, uh, in this series, what I like to do is just, uh, for my own personal reasons, learn a little bit more about the photographers that I look at and I love, but also share with the people watching out there, maybe some things you didn't know about that photographer, or in Kathy's case, a picture you've seen and you may have not known it was her. So uh, I'm just going to start off by saying that I first uh, heard of you by seeing your name. And uh, I, I love looking at photography and I thought I wanted to be a photojournalist when I first started shooting. I loved all the wartime photographers of World War II and, uh, and, and before that. And it just really got me interested in being in the action. I started seeing bylines. I always looked at credits and I read that before I looked at the picture. And I saw Kathy Anderson a lot. And so you worked with the Times Picune uh, during what times? What years were you there? So I worked there uh, from 1981 until the beginning of 2010. So 28 years. I really basically grew up at the at the newspaper. First wow. full time job out of college. Okay, and that, what what a what a tenure! I bet you saw not only the stories evolve from um, New Orleans and beyond, but technology. Uh, anything you want to share about the first camera you picked up and the last one you put down with the TP? With the TP, well, I had a Nikon F years ago. I think that was my personal camera, though. I, I don't remember my first camera for the TP, but, but we were shooting black and white film. So okay. I saw the transition from black and white to color and then color to digital. And they were, you know, totally different worlds. I still remember when we were going to go to color from black and white uh, that we were going to go like a week later and then there was a fire at the Cabildo and we just switched to color that day and it was it was crazy. Wow. Oh, wow. Technological changes in, in my career there that were um, pretty exciting, really. What a pivotal moment to remember the, the, the flames of the Cabildo being the color of the of your transition, you know? Yep. That's, that's cool. So my, my whole career there, I mean, it was, it was exciting. I loved that job. I mean, I worked with some amazing photographers, writers, editors, graphic artists, illustrators. It was fun. We had a blast. We had a group dark room. Everyone was playing jokes on each other all the time. I did some traveling. I went with the Saints to, Los a to uh, London for an exhibition game. I did New York fashion. I covered the 92 Los Angeles riots, which I've been thinking about a lot wow. this week. You did a bunch of coverage in, in Central America in the 80s. In fact, and I, I, I remember um, coming back from a war zone area in Nicaragua after a week. And um, my first assignment was Pet of the Week. And that was so typical of newspapering. I mean, you did everything. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't all news. It wasn't all sports or fashion it was a little bit of everything you really were sort of the uh you know the the street photographer the news photographer the sports photographer the fashion person and um i love that i think probably because i i have a little attention deficit disorder so that would uh that would uh make me welcome uh, that that kind of array but it yeah. was fun it was fun that's it was good. Uh... It was, for the most part we did a lot of features and we had to do um, what they called wild art. You'd go out and you'd just find something in the street. So I, I consider it the newspaper version of street photography. So that was a lot of my time during that, during that period. I also spent five years on the night shift. So I saw my share of murder scenes, um, which is, uh, you know, just kind of a vast experience. And I'm, I'm glad that I was able to work at newspapers in the, in the heyday. Well, I, uh, I often look at uh, photojournalism uh, as the, 
the, the ultimate type of photography, especially if you're working with a, a paper and you're telling stories, you have to know uh, your camera and your ability so well to tell a story in every type of situation, both lighting, both dangerous, both full of um, extreme emotions, highs and lows from going to London with the Saints to Nicaragua to, um, to, to all kinds of uh, things that maybe it involve pets, but also involve music. And I, I just, yeah, when you said pet of the day, it reminded me of one of my favorite pictures that you've done. I've seen a lot of your stuff, but I am from Lafayette and I love Zotico music and I love Buckwheat Zotico. Okay. Can you tell me about this image right here? Sure. I, I was working on a, it was a portrait series of musicians that were going to um, perform at the Jazz and Heritage Festival. So I, I kind of created a style you know, large soft box, the same backdrop. In fact, I still have that backdrop. It's behind me right now. I think I have that backdrop too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I took that all over the place and just photographed, uh, you know, a, a dozen or so musicians that were going to play. Yeah. And it was, it was fun. And when I got to um, Stanley Durrell's house, he, he had all of these animals and he loved animals. And so we had to put the backdrop in a carport outside and the cats, oh. one cat wandered in and I said, well, let's bring them all in. And <laughs> he was just so happy that it was fabulous. You know, it, just, it was fun. I, I love that picture because he's smiling and the mama cat's on his lap and all the babies are down there except for the one at the top. And, uh, and, and you even see, uh, I'm going to share it again, the one cat at the bottom just kind of hissing, you know, and the mom about to jump down. And I, I mean, I look, at the, I look at his hat. I look at his white socks and his red boots. Like, what a great moment uh, of, of a, a true master of, of Zotico. And the, as I said, the ability of a, a photographer to go into any scene and make someone feel comfortable and deal with the lighting. And I, that is the thing that they don't teach you in school. You just gotta be yourself and figure that out. And you, you made a great moment of it and a great image. Well, thank you. It was fun. I mean, I, I'm just thankful that I had those, that experience to be able to you know, meet, meet him and all the other musicians that I, that, I was, well, that I photographed for that project. It was fun. Yeah. and. Um, I think that's what I love about photography most of all is that the camera has allowed me to meet people that I would have normally never met, go places I would have normally never gone, and put myself in situations that only being a photographer have awarded me. And you've got these musicians and you've got this way of telling stories, but uh, kind of talking about now, in the last two months of our world in New Orleans and around the world, we've been, however you want to call it, quarantined, uh, you're isolating. Um, there's still stories out there and you are able to continue documenting the world around you. Did you find that that was something you uh, took too easily from your days at just being able to shift duties at the newspaper? Or was this maybe a little harder because it was happening? Well, you know, it, a lot of people ask me that if I'd compare this to covering Hurricane Katrina, you know, for Hurricane Katrina, I was here at the, I stayed at the newspaper during the storm. I, you know, ended up going to the National, uh, Army National Guard and Black Hawk helicopters and Humvees and airboats. And I, I didn't stop working for, you know, months. Um, but for this, I was no longer you know, working with a news organization. And I, I found the beginning very introspective. I started cleaning out my office. I started, you know, looking through all these pictures and realizing that I really didn't, hadn't created an archive of the work I'd done in the past. So I, I was spending a lot of time doing that, trying to get things together. And, um, and so then one night, and I, I don't know if this is the next picture or not, because I can't remember what I sent you. But I have something like this. Yes. So my neighbor across the street, this is my block. Um, wow. My neighbor <laughs> across the street 
he he just sent out a little e group email. Hey, I, I'm having a driveway concert with a band, you know, with a band called the Cry Babies. And I actually thought it was a joke because his kids are always crying. I said, Oh, he oh. must have his, his kids out there. <laughs> so I went out. And it's all these uh, women who live together, or the quarantine together, and they have a band. Oh. And then I realized I hadn't even been out of the house in four days. Oh and my I, God. I think, I think I was sort of getting depressed and I didn't know it. And um, so I, I went and pulled out my camera and that just felt good to make a picture. And uh, one of my other neighbors asked me if, um, if she could hire me to do a porch portrait of her and her family. And I said, well, you can't hire me, but I would love to do a porch portrait. So then of course, Doug said, you know, we should do all of the neighbors. So I send out a little um, Calendly link and everybody signed up. So at seven o'clock every night, I would go out and take a, make some photographs of some of my different neighbors and ending up chatting with them. Um, just, some of them would give me wine, we'd talk. And I think it just psychologically, it was really good for me because it got me out of the house. It got me um, photographing <laughs> of Susan with her dogs. Um, it was just, that, that was great. So um, yeah, I did that and it, it, it kind of brought me back to life in a way that well, was good. Okay, so um, we've got, Buckwheat with his cats and Susan with her dogs. I'm uh, seeing the theme here, Kathy. <laughs> seeing the theme here. You like animals. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> I, I love this. And one thing from a, a, uh, a technical standpoint, I love um, your use of hiding the light. Uh, I, I, the strobe kind of behind the tree for the crybabies. Right. The strobe in the house for well, Susan shot, right? Yeah, and that's called Doug holding my light on a model. Uh, awesome. <laughs> it helps if you have a spouse. <laughs> yeah, ab absolutely. And um, I, I do like how you're, uh, you know, uh, again, photojournalist, you got to know it all. Like you're able to right. balance artificial and um, right. natural light. It's not an easy thing to do and still tell a story without it being uh, right. distracting. You know, you like don't want, you don't want the light to be overwhelming. Yes, because it takes away from the story, and uh, away from Susan or Stanley or the crybabies. You know, um, I, I do want to talk about uh, uh, another image that this is kind of something I alluded to uh, earlier, where people have probably seen this picture and didn't know it was based off of uh, one of your uh, photographs to help the. Was it to help the painter? Paint the image? Yes, I, I, uh, a friend of mine is, is a, an amazingly talented illustrator. His name is Michael Dees. And he used to hire me to photograph, uh, to do reference photography for his paintings. He's done a bunch of uh, book covers, stamps, some commissioned work. So I would uh, photograph different scenes or people for him for these paintings that he did. Yeah. And on this one, it was going to be the Columbia Pictures logo, a re remake of it. Yeah. Um, and so we um, we set up a portable studio. I did in in my uh, Canal Boulevard apartment. I moved the dining room table out. I uh, set up the backdrop. I used to shoot with these giant Chimera soft boxes, which um, you know worked well for that shoot because he really wanted all the folds to to stay in place and uh we did yeah. some details we did some um we did some you know full length close close and it, it was a great deal of fun so i remember the day michael showed up he he had he brought the sheets he brought a lamp that kind of looked like a it could be a torch you yeah. could see the cord on it and the picture <laughs> and um yeah we just had fun we just shot a bunch of stuff and uh and um it was great I really didn't, I guess I didn't re realize that the picture would become that famous until I, until I went to a movie and saw it on the screen. I was like, wow, that's Jenny. Jenny was a, a coworker at the time speaking. She was the model. Uh -huh. um, so and last week, in the week before, two people called me to interview me about this picture that I shot 30 years ago. I saw ago. something on your website or your social media or something. Was it like an Italian? It was, uh, there was a Spanish, uh, 
news uh, service that interviewed me. And then another, another, I guess it was a magazine from, from London. Yeah. I don't know why the interest so much, you know, so many years later, but, um, but it's fun. So who knows and who cares? Yeah. We get to learn about you. It's, you know, uh-huh. it was great. So I have actually, you know, have, have had a, a great, uh, a great career, but that picture is probably my most well-known. Yeah, and it's one of those things where, uh, I said this before, uh, a lot of people, both local and now international, have seen your work and just didn't know it was you. And like, we're, we're discovering like, wait, that's a Kathy Anderson. I, I like that picture. And you do have a, a style. I start to see more of what you do. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, you and I were a part of the American Society of Media Photographers, mm-hmm. uh, the local chapter, and um, it, it gives the ability for us to learn about each other. And that's kind of what I'm hoping to do with this, uh, this one-on-one series is to take a little bit of time just to sit down and talk with another photographer. And uh, I keep it short and sweet, Kathy. That's uh, about all I have to say, unless you wanted to share something else that's on your mind or on your plate. Yeah, that's great. I, I think it's a great idea. I'm, I'm looking forward to learning about the other photographers. Well, I'll be uploading things uh, as we go. Uh, I have uh, someone booked for uh, the next week, but um, as I start getting more, give me some suggestions. I'd love to hear what you have to say and anybody you want to learn about. Okay, I'll send you, I'll send you some names. Okay, awesome. Well, Kathy, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for your time. And uh, I look forward to seeing more of your pictures out there. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.